Okay, in this section, you're going to look at some theorems about zeros of polynomial functions. We'll definitely work through um, many of these in the homework problems, but it just says the fundamental theorem of algebra, every polynomial function of degree n with n greater than or equal to one has at least one zero in the set of complex numbers. So if you're asked to find a polynomial function of degree three, having zeros one, this would be a zero, three i, x minus three i, and negative three i, x plus three i. So we could construct a polynomial. Notice that this a sub n can be any non-zero number, but to make it simple, we leave this as a one. If I multiply these two first, multiply the factors, so I get the x squared minus 9i, because notice x, the middle term is going to cancel out, and then multiply this completely out, then I get my polynomial. Zeros of polynomial functions with real coefficients. Um, what's nice about these, if we have complex numbers, we can simply look at the um, conjugates for them, and that's what it shows here with the rational if we're looking at rational coefficients as well. So for example, if we're given, we want a um, polynomial of degree six, then I can write these as the conjugates. So that becomes negative five i plus two i, and then plus square root of three. And then you will, you will see that you'll end here with the rational zeros theorem where all, in this case, all the coefficients are integers. So all of the a's are integers. And then we can consider a rational number denoted by what we just did, the division of rational functions, where p and q are relatively prime, meaning they have no common factors besides a negative 1 and 1. If when we do this division is a 0 of p of x, then p is a factor of my a sub 0, and q is a factor of my a sub n. And then ending, you'll look at the change in signs if the sign variations change based on this Descartes rule of signs. And once again, just an overview of what to look forward to in this section.